नमस्ते यस सो वी कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम वेर वी लेफ्ट यस्टरडे वी वेर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द दोषास वेन वी फाउंड दैट दोषास ईच ऑफ द दोषास रिप्रेजेंट द पैटर्न ऑफ गुनास एंड द बॉडी इज मैट्रिक्स ऑफ गुनास इन विच ऑल दिस chemical changes happen which we can understand through the gurvadi gunas and the gurvadi gunas you know are understood as a continuum of physical chemical properties and four of this continuum which means eight gunas are the most important and the most important among these eight gunas are ushna and shita which actually initiate all chemical changes inside the body so ushna creates all the exothermic reactions where heat is released and shita is involved in all endothermic reactions where heat energy is conserved and this is what is represented by ushna and shita gunas and the doshas are actually continuously modulating these endothermic exothermic reactions in the body and the sum total of all these activities we call as metabolism which involves substances forming bonds and breaking bonds which we understand in terms of snigdha and druksha gunas and as substances form and break bonds you know they either gain mass or lose mass so there is gurutvam and lakutvam and as a result the speed of the metabolic we can say today it is called as basal metabolic rate when the basal met basal metabolic rate slows down we call the body is now in dominating in manda guna when the basal metabolic rate goes up then the body becomes tikshna guna the whole set of chemical reactions happen at a fast speed and there is more breakdown so when you want to lose weight you use substances which have tikshna which will induce tikshna guna in your body when you want to gain weight we will use substances which have manda guna in the body so these uh, four sets of gunas making it eight is most predominantly used in ayurveda to explain how these actions happen and doshas are uh, representing the basic pathways in which these chemical reactions happen in the body so we can say the pathway of vata the pathway of pitta and the pathway of kapha and at the center is you know the source of all energy of all physical and that which connects the physical with what is beyond the physical is agni agni is therefore called in our tradition as asthira murti asthira murti means it manifest it you can see it only when it is burning otherwise it is in uh, hidden inside now when you see petrol you don't see fire the potential fire that is there when it burns you can see how powerful what a powerful fire was in, inside that fuel so it is called as asthira murti 
when fire manifests, it burns the very substratum from which it is manifesting. So it destroys it completely. So we need to protect the fire. We need to burn and not to burn at the same time. And that is the whole protection of this Agni, Kaya, Antara Agni. And we also referred to the Vedic hymn, the beginning hymn of the Vedas, which says Agni Mele Purohitam Yetnyasya Devam Ritvijam Hotaram Ratnadhatam. So this is what we discussed so far. And now we will go to the verses. So once again, we can see Rukshashito. When it comes to Vata, it is said Rukshashito. And Pitta is Sasneha Mushnam. And in Kapha, Gurushita Mradusnigdham. Okay. So, uh, actually speaking, amongst the gunas of the doshas, we will study a little bit more in detail later. The guna, with, there is one guna which is very central and important for each dosha. When it comes to vata, it is ruksha guna. So, ruksha guna is that which really causes the aggravation or increase of vata. So when we want to treat vata, if you want to control vata, we have to always use snigdha guna. That is why rucha guna has been mentioned. And when it comes to pitta, it is sasneha mushnam. Sasneha mushnam means for pitta, ushna is the aggravating factor. For Kapha, Ruksha is the aggravating factor. So, for Pitta to be pacified, we always need to use Shita. Whatever other combinations are there, we can use different combinations of Gunas. But ultimately, if we want to pacify Vata, Snigdha Guna should be used. So, yes, for Vata, Snigdha Guna has to be used. If all, even if all other gunas are used, vata will not get pacified as much as when you use snigdha guna. For pitta, whatever other gunas you use, and unless shita guna is also there, pitta will not pacify. And when it comes to kapha, it's snigdha guna which is important. Kapha can get reduced only by rucha guna. So here vagbhada has been a little bit more uh, explicit because instead of saying Guru Shita Murdu Snigdha Mathura Sthira Pichila, Vagpada put Snigdha Shito Guru Mantha Slakshno Mratsna Sthira Kapha. Snigdha Shito, he uses the word Snigdha Shita in the beginning, which is actually better than what Charaka has written here because by the first two slow, uh, you know, gunas. By mentioning the first two gunas, we understand what should be the type of dravyas, the properties of the type, the dravyas that we are we should use in order to pacify the doshas. So, ruksha, shita, and snigdha are the three major gunas for each of the doshas. Then the second guna, which is important for vata. Ruksha and Shita Guna make Vata really aggravated. Ruksha and Ushna Guna increases Vata, but Ruksha and Shita Guna is what actually aggravates Vata. So many practices are there, what we do when we, when we are out in the sun, the heat causes a lot of Ruksha Guna in the body. Many of us do this thing, immediately 
on getting back home we drink ice cold water according to ayurveda don't do it. yes yeah according to ayurveda this is you know absolutely dangerous drinking suddenly drinking cold water when your body has been heated up a lot is actually going to cause aggravation severe aggravation of vata so that ushna abhitaptasya jala pravesha this can also harm our eyes so the understanding of these gunas very carefully and understanding of various substances that we are using as a name has helped ayurveda to give us a lot of guidance in our day to day activities so that we don't prevent the disturbance of doshas inadvertently so ruksha and shita together is always so the best treatment for vata generally there are exceptions we will learn that when we come to the study of rasas or the taste but generally vata requires snigdha if it is ushna snigdha then it is the best so vata is ushna snigdha satmya vata syopakrama sneha swedah so mild warming warm oils are best for vata that is why in all vata diseases in ayurveda there is this use of warm oils pitta is sasneha mushnam so the opposite gunas should be used for pacifying pitta shita and ruksha very good for pitta but very bad for vata so what increases one dosha may decrease another that this is the biggest challenge so when you are trying to pacify pitta you have a chance that you will increase vata so kapha is snigdha and shita so you have to use ruksha and ushna for vata generally even ruksha and shita will be helpful for kapha but it will aggravate aggravate vata so this is the when you understand the logic of the gunas we know we come to this biggest challenge our goal is not to pacify any one of the doshas we have to pacify all the three doshas but if you look at this equation of gunas you may be wondering how can ever we do that is it not because if you try to pacify one dosha it is going to increase another dosha if you then try to pacify that dosha then another dosha will increase this is a vicious circle so this is in fact this is how what ayurveda says the body is this is why all without understanding the logic of the gunas if we apply medicines then we will be treating one problem and creating another problem which is which is today we are experiencing in the form of side effects ayurveda was the first system to point out that when you specify one thing you must do that without disturbing another prayoga shamed vyadhim yonyam anya mudirayed nasau vishuddha shuddhas tu shamed yanna kopayet prayoga shamed vyadhim the prayoga which will specify one vyadhi prayoga shamed vyadhim yonyam udirayet but it will create or udireyed anyam vyadhi na sav vishuddha this is not vishuddha this is not shuddha chikitsa na sav vishuddha shuddhas tu shamayed yanna kopayet so prayoga shamed vyadhim yonyam prayoga shamed vyadhim yonyam ek oh, sorry i'm just missing that slogan does anybody remember this i mentioned it right first then got a bit distracted anybody in ayurveda doctor who remembers that words correctly yo anyam anyam udireyet 
പ്രയോഗക്ഷമേത് വ്യാധി യോന്യമന്യമുദീരയത് യെസ് സോ ഇറ്റ് വിൽ ദ ദ വ്യാധി വിച്ച് സ്പെസിഫൈസ് ഐ മീൻ ദ ട്രീറ്റ്മെന്റ് ദറ്റ് സ്പെസിഫൈസ് വൺ വ്യാധി ആൻഡ് വിച്ച് ക്രിയേറ്റ്സ് അനദർ വ്യാധി ഇസ് അശുദ്ധ ചികിത്സ സോ ആയുർവേദ ഇസ് എ പ്രൊപ്പോണൻ്റ് ഓഫ് ശുദ്ധ ചികിത്സ സോ ന ഹൗ ഡു വി അച്ചീവ് ദിസ് സി സപ്പോസ് വാത്ത ഹാസ് ഇൻക്രീസ്ഡ് and i am giving ushnasnik the chikitsa what will happen pitta will increase kapha will also increase suppose kapha has increased and i am giving ushna ruksha chikitsa or ushna chida chikitsa ruksha chida chikitsa so vata will increase pitta has increased and i am doing chida ruksha chikitsa now vata will increase so is it ever even possible to make sure that you do all, shaman of all the three dosha this is where the whole science of molecular combinatorics in ayurveda comes into picture when i treat vata i should not disturb the other doshas which are increased or decreased so we need to have a attention to all the three doshas at the same time for this we have to do something which we will learn as we go further but i hope the concept is at least conveyed now we call in ayurveda this is guna vikalpa we have to do guna vikalpa we have to bring a combination of gunas in such a way that all the three doshas are ad- addressed at the same time see work uh, trying to balance the three doshas is like having three bosses or to put in a lighter way in having three husbands or three wives you can imagine how difficult it is to please your boss one boss itself is difficult to please and if you have three bosses then it is extremely difficult it is that is at your workplace at home i am finding today that husband and wife are dif- very difficult to adjust to each other so if there are three one itself is a big headache if there are three then it's almost impossible that is the uh, outlook you can have when you think of these doshas they are very very difficult to manage very very delicate if you make a small mistake one of them will get upset and all three can get upset if you are not very careful so we need to do what is called as guna vikalpa so that is why the gunas of the doshas are mentioned and you can find that there are com- dravyas which combinations of gunas so just like doshas are there individually dravyas guna ye ukta dravyesh ദ്രവ്യേഷു ശരീരേഷു അപ്പി തേ തഥാ സ്ഥാനവൃദ്ധിക്ഷയാസ്തസ്മാദ്ദേഹിനാം ദ്രവ്യഹേതുക ഗുണായ ഉക്ത ദ്രവ്യേഷു ദ ഗുണാസ് വിച്ച് ആർ എക്സ് മെൻഷൻഡ് ഇൻ ദ ദ്രവ്യാസ് ഓർ സീൻ ഇൻ ദ ദ്രവ്യാസ് ദ സെയിം ആർ ആക്ച്വലി സീൻ ഇൻ ദ ശരീര ഓൾസോ ഗുണായ ഉക്ത ദ്രവ്യേഷു ശരീരേഷു അപ്പി തേ തഥാ so sthana vriddhi kshaya tasma dehinam dravya hetuka so i have to do a correct vikalpa of what gunas are disturbed in the body and then i have to do a vikalpa of what gunas are there in the dravya and how i can combine these dravyas to create a guna vikalpa that is exactly matching the imbalance of gunas in the body it has to be like a lock and key mechanism today ayurveda physicians are become vyadhi pratyanika chikitsa they say vyadhi vibhid vyadhi vibhid everybody is interested in vyadhi vibhid for any treatment we are trying to give medicines okay this is for anemia this is for cough this dosha vikalpa guna vikalpa is completely gone in ayurveda so medicines are now equated to diseases and they will never be perfectly matching the guna vikalpa in each patient so with ayurvedic treatment also there will be side effects there is no medicine which is safe by itself only by prayoga it becomes safe 
Prayoga means the way you apply it. Aushadham is always having side effects. Any medicine, any substance will have side effects. According to Ayurveda, Nacha Kinjit Adosha Nurgunam. There is nothing which is without dosha or guna. So if I take, go on taking Ashwagandha saying it's very good without looking at the actual guna vigalpa in my body, then Ashwagandha will also cause side effects. And then we will blame Ayurveda. So that is why Ayurveda has said Prayoga Shamayad Vyadhim. The Prayoga of Ashwagandha has to be correct. For that we have to look at Dushyam, Desham, Balam, Kalam, Analam, Prakritim, Vaya, Sattvam, Satmyam, Tathaharam. Yeah, Ubhayarthagari Chikitsa is when you are, that's a very straightforward thing, the text have explained it. Hetu Vyadhi Viparyastha Viparyastha Artha Karinam Aushadhanna Viharanam Upayoga Sukhavaham So when it is Hetu Viparita and Vyadhi Viparita Then you know we call it that way. I will come back, come back to that. But now I will explain it. Yes, through symptoms by Nadi Pariksha, whatever is possible, we can do. He has to analyze findings. We have to analyze the findings. So, like yesterday, even an image we can analyze from Ayurvedic point of view. Uh, you look at a liver, cirrhosed liver, and by seeing what changes have happened physically in the structure, we can deduce okay, what doshas are disturbed. So, symptoms and findings, both are required. Symptoms are what the patients experience, but there is much more that the Vaidya can find. So, this is called as symptoms and clinical findings. What all the Vaidya finds, feels, because the symptoms give you only a partial picture. It only tells us what is troubling, how the patient is troubled by the disease. It doesn't tell us exactly what the disease is. So apart from symptoms, you need to bring out findings. Today, findings are obtained by scanning, by blood test, you know, by deep physical examination, palpation. So in olden times also they did. But their difference was they had something called as Ashtasthana. Ashtasthana. Pariksha. So all those things were used in olden times. So it's a big yes, Jaya Sudha, some question. Oh, yes, sir. Namaste. Actually, the other day when uh, we are listening, you introduced about uh, Vata Pitta Kapha, you said uh, uh, at any given point of time, different organs may be afflicted by uh, Vata Pitta or Kapha, any of them. Like it's not, it's not uniform in all the organs, right? Yeah. What I have understood. Then, then while treating, how is it? Uh, I mean, how are they targeted? Like, which organ? See, for uh, vata, if vata shamana is given, some other organ might be having. So, I mean, it may uh, aggravate some other uh, this thing. And how is it? Uh, I don't know. I didn't fully understand your question, but I will try to explain based on what I think you have asked. Okay. See, the doshas are distributed in the body not evenly. Yes. The upper part is dominant in Kapha, middle part in Pitta and lower part in Vata. Certain organs are dominant in. So that is their normal. So when the doshas, you know, their uh, dominance changes, like for example, if Vata increases in the brain, you can see the brain of an Alzheimer's patient or a Parkinson's patient. You can find shrinkage and gaps happening in that brain which when you see uh, MRI from an Ayurvedic point of view, for us it is like Vata has increased in the brain. So Vata is not 
the normal dosha to dominate in the brain. So which means it is a sthana of kapha where vata has increased. So we call this as sthanika dosha and agantu dosha. Okay. So which has aggravated? Is it the sthanika dosha or an agantu dosha? If a sthanika dosha increases also there can be a problem. If there is too much of kapha in the in the brain, then it may cause tumors and growths and swelling. So we are saying here the sthanika dosha has itself increased. If vata has increased, it is agandu dosha that has increased. So disease actually manifests in a platform. There is some organ or disease pathway, we call it as roga margas. The koshta, shakha and marma. So somewhere it, it has to manifest. And that area where the pathology or dosha dosha samurchana happens, we try to find out what is the dosha that is involved, what is the dosha that is involved. Is the dosha an agandu dosha? Means it is not its, its it has increased not in its natural place, just increased in a location where, like for example, kapha increasing in liver. Liver is not the natural sthana of kapha. So kapha there is an akandu dosha. If pitta increases in liver, then we say it is the sthaniga dosha. So agandum shamayad dosham sthaninam pratikrityava. So we say when we, so there are so many strategies. We have only started studying medicine itself, modern also we take five and a half years. So like this, we have to slowly understand these concepts before we can know how to diagnose specific location of Dosha Gopa. That is the diagnosis. Like a GPS, we have to locate in what exact point in the body the Dosha Gopa has happened. See, today, when during COVID time we were doing, no, these people, when they were spreading the disease, they used to make a map of where, the, where all the person went and how many people he may have infected, they make a map. So Ayurvedic diagnosis is also like that, that this, uh, this assessment or recreating the crime scene, that is what I like to look at it as. This is the diagnosis of Ayurveda. We recreate that crime scene, no? When a crime is done, the police comes and then he brings the culprit and asks them, to do exactly show how it all happened. They reconstruct the crime scene. Only at that, yes? Uh, no, um, see, like just in the example you have given, uh, if kapha increases in the brain, then yeah. um, for that, uh, it's uh, agant. Uh, no, kapha is thaniga dosha. Thanik, in, the, in her brain? Yes, kapha, it is this location of kapha. Ah, yeah, okay, okay, Stanika dosha. So, to uh, counteract that, we give uh, um, uh, pitta, uh, I mean, the dravya, which increases ushna. Yes. Right? So, will it not affect the pitta and other organs of the body? Ah, that is why. that it, it Usually, if you give a modern medicine, it will affect. But Ayurveda, we target. <laughs> yes, in, like in chemotherapy, though, we want only the. Uh, Yes. Cancer cells to die. The other uh, uh, parts of the body also get affected. Because oh, that is why we, Ayurveda has a theory of how drug is delivered. Kedari Kulya Nyaya, Khalega Bodha Nyaya, which is the substances get delivered only to the, today in modern medicine also there is something called as targeted therapy. Yeah. Targeted therapy for cancer means it will target only the cancer cells. New, new targeted therapies have come which spares the other cells. But Ayurvedic treatment right from the beginning has been targeted. The whole, that is why we have to use, like for example, you know, Guglu is a, a, a plant which has got a scraping action. If I use Laksha Guglu, it will go to the bones. It will not go anywhere else. If I use Kanchanara Guglu, it will go to my uh, thyroid. If I use Yograj Gugulu, it will go to my joints. If I use Gokshiradi Gugulu, it will go to my bladder. This is the beautiful way of targeting the drug. So, like I, they have two kashayams, 
Amrudotaram Kashayam and Vyagradi Kashayam. Both are used for fevers. But Vyagradi Kashayam has a plan, Vyagri, which will make that drug work only on the lungs. Whereas Amrudotaram Kashayam, if you have a generalized viral fever, you can give Amrudotaram Kashayam. It will work on the whole body. Especially if you have body ache, joint pain, then Amrudotaram Kashayam is better. But if you have a respiratory infection, and fever, then you have to use Vyagradi Kashaya because it will target it to that. So every formula has this combination. So it is said that it is like a king and its courtiers. Tehitanyanuvartande Manujendra Mivetaraha. So Viruddha Viryam Apyesham Pradhananam Abhathagam. This is mentioned in Charaka Kalpasthana. That a formulation is like the king and its courtiers. This concept is much more well elaborated in Chinese medicine. In their formulas, they clearly spell out who is the king, who is the courtier. So this shows that blood is circulating. That is true. <laughs> If so, you know, everything would have reached everywhere. So the brain has blood brain barrier. Everything has a barrier. Your, uh, but the first thing we learn in physiology is that your membranes are selectively permeable. It doesn't allow everything to pass through. And blood is circulating, but only through capillaries, substances has to get into the interstitial fluid. And then only it can reach the cells. So blood doesn't get into the cells. Blood is simply circulating through the vessels. Doesn't mean anything. Everything is controlled by membranes. You must study about the plasma membranes. So the membranes are selectively permeable. This is a, for a specific srotasas are there. Rasava, rasarakta, mamsa, medo, veha srotasas. So we have to target those rotuses like Kedari Kulyanyaya, what is required for each will be delivered. Otherwise it is called Vimarga Gamanam Chavi Srodasam Dushti Lakshana. Adi Pravartir Sangova Siranam Grantha Yopicha. Vimarga Gamanam. If one thing goes in another marga, then it is Vimarga Gamanam. So you know, even in our circulation, if there is Vimarga Gamanam, that is if the venous blood enters into the arterial circulation, we are finished. If there is mixing of arterial and venous blood, we are finished. It's not that everything is going everywhere. That is a very uh, superficial understanding. The body, is, everything is controlled. It's like passport control. Everybody, you have to show your passport for before anything can get inside. But toxins, actually poisons, don't follow. They are terrorists. They can reach anywhere. Because according to Ayurveda, they have Vyavai Vikarshi Guna. So they will reach anywhere and they will destroy the body. So Ayurveda creates the formulations in such a way. So many things have to be fulfilled before I give a medicine to a patient. All the three doshas should be remain balanced after my treatment. My medicine should go and reach only that specific dhadu where the disease is manifesting. It should not disturb anything else. So, unless these two conditions are fulfilled and I must make the medicine in such a way that the body is able to digest it and distribute it like a courier service to the right address we have to send. It's not like, so usually Ayurveda people today, modern doctors are making fun of us saying that they are throwing stones at mangoes. That treatment is like that. Because the way we are practicing today has become like that. But the actual Ayurvedic practice was very, very, very specific. We were making sure that the medicine is targeted, it is balancing, and it doesn't disturb, you know.
Is that clear? So that is why we are studying these gunas. Yukta Shito, Lakhu Sukshma, Chalotha, Vishadakkara, Viparida, Gunair, Dravyair, Maruda, Samprasamyati. When these gunas are mentioned, you can see Sasneha, Mushnam, Tikshnam, Chadrava, Mamlam, Saram, Katu. So Pitta and there is no clear overlap. Some gunas are opposite. So immediately we know when we try to handle Vata, Pitta will get disturbed or Pitta, when you handle Kapha will get disturbed. So the whole process of treatment is to find out Dosha Shamanam. How do I? Otherwise, only three or four herbs would have been necessary. Ayurveda has thousands and thousands of formulations. Yoga. Ayurvedic medicines are called as yoga. Yoga means combination. Yoga Manjari, Sahasra Yogam. In Kerala, there is a very famous book of Kerala physicians, 1000 formulations. 1000 ways in which herbs can be combined. So simply combining few herbs is, uh, for each patient we have to combine specifically. For each patient we will have to combine specifically. So we, in Ayurveda, two things are there. One is doing the Gunavikalpa, understanding in what proportions the doshas have got disturbed and where has it got disturbed. Saiva kupito dosha, samutthana visheshada, sthanandara gadas chaiva rogan prakurude gahun. Tasmad vikara prakritihi, Tathas Thanandaranicha Jnatva The physician has to Vikara Prakriti which means what Hetu has caused the disturbance of which dosha because Saeva Kupito dosha Samuthana Vishesha according to Hetu Vishesha the dosha kopa combination changes. So is it a single dosha kopa, dual dosha kopa or triple dosha kopa? You have to clearly understand. This is one aspect of Ayurvedic diagnosis. Then which sthana, where is it disturbed? Sthana andaragadas chaiva. Bahun rogan pragurute. Tasmad vigara pragurdihi athishthana andaranicha. Tasmad vigara pragurdihi athishthana andaranicha. So two things we have to understand. It's not enough to know just what dosha is disturbed. Today people are saying, I have Vata, so what do you mean by I have Vata problem? There can be 100,000 Vata problems. Where is it happening? Where has that Vata started creating this disturbance? Which are the other doshas? So, just like a kaleidoscope, the combination, samsargad, rasarudhiradhivis, tathesham, doshascha, Chaya samata vibhruddhi bhedai anandyam taradama yoga dascha yadan jani yad avahita mana soyathasso. This is what is advised to the clinician. Samsarga the rasaru dhiradhivistadesha. Because the doshas get into association with rasaru dhiradhiv dhatus. Doshas chaya samata vibhruddhi bhedai. So it is a computation that we have to do. Today we are talking about computational analysis. Dosha Vikalpa is nothing but computational analysis. We are computing all these possibilities. Chaya Samata Vivrithibai. Anantyam. There are infinite computations possible. Anantyam Taratama Yoga Dascha Yadan. When you look at all these Taratama Yogas, in various degrees of disturbance, whether they have increased or decreased or are normal and in the way they combine with all these, you know, disease number is infinite. I've seen in many places, traditional, they say, totally there are 450 diseases for which uh, this system has all the medicines. Ayurveda doesn't believe, has never tried to count diseases. Diseases are aparisankhya. New and new diseases will keep happening because the infinite ways in which doshas and our dhatus interact. 
and the infinite ways in which we are capable of creating doshic disturbances. New hetus keep coming. New permutations and combinations of the causative factors lead to newer and newer ways in which doshas can get disturbed. And newer and newer ways in which they will damage our structure and organs. So there is no end to. That's why Nidana Dosha Dushyanam Viparitam Hidam Dhruvam Uktan Uktan Gadan Sarvan Samyak Yuktam Niyachari. So Ukta Gadan and Ukta Gadas are always there. No text can say I have listed all the diseases. Today modern medicine is trying to create an international classification of diseases. ICD. Now ICD 11 is in process. And they are included a chapter on Ayurveda also. I was invited to peer review some of these terms and, and today what they are trying to do is to give equivalence for modern classifications in Ayurvedic terms. It doesn't really help much because what we need to do is do the Vikalpa, you know, in the Ayurvedic way. So that is Dosha Dosha Samurchana and the, why we are studying these Gunas here is to Toxins reach everywhere because they spread before they are metabolized by the body. They are apakis. All other med Ayurvedic modern medicines are apaki also because they are toxins. They are toxins used in therapeutic dosages. Nishevyamana tilasho visham api amartayate yogadabhi visham tikshnam uttamam bheshajam bhavet. So, Nishevyamana tilashu, tilashu nishevyamana. In small quantities, when you use visham, visham appi amritayade, even visham becomes amrita. This is the principle of modern medicine. Use poisons in small doses. They call this as the therap window between therapeutic dose and toxic dose. So the therapeutic dose is a dose in which toxicity is less and benefits are more. So they do dose titration and find out. Once they know a drug has an activity, next step is dose fixation. Some drugs, the toxic dose to therapeutic dose window is very small. We have to be very careful when you use such drugs. A slight overdose will kill the patient. Some drugs have, do you know what is, how much paracet, paracetamol is something which is so widely disused. What is the daily high dose for paracetamol i hope everybody knows paracetamol maximum daily dose anybody knows not three doses i want an mg Yes, sir. Hello. Yes. Um, paracetamol dose actually in India, Pasho Poncho Shatam um, MG. But paracetamol we 650. 60 MG we use actually in India. No, paracetamol it, is a very uh, toxic substance for your liver. You can have paracetamol induced liver damage if you overdose. So it's very, very important to know. It is the toxic dose and therapeutic dose, there is a gap. So usually when you take this drug, we don't encounter any severe side effects because we are using at a very, very low dose, not its toxic dose. But if somebody by mistakes takes in a lot of paracetamol, you can have acute liver failure. That will not happen if we eat one bottle of chamanaprash, you may just have a little diarrhea or uh, vomiting. Many of the Ayurvedic medicines, even at a higher, that is why Ayurvedic medicines, also we are using toxins sometimes. There the dosing is to be very careful. In Ayurveda, we use food as medicine. Then there is something called medicine. Then there is poison. In modern medicine, there is only food and drug. Ayurveda is Ahara, Aushadha and Visha. Food, medicine and drug. So food is something which 
will also be toxic but you have to really you have to overload your stomach with uh, rice then it will you will see some toxic effects so that the gap between if the gap between the toxic dose and the nutritional dose is very very high then you can classify it as food if that if so which, which means it's not even possible for you to consume that drug in toxic doses who will eat three kilos four kilos of rice nobody can do see there is toxicity from water also have you heard water toxicity even water can cause toxicity the high intake of water sometimes runners take and that's all yeah yeah there is something called as actually water toxicity if you today people are crazy about drinking water simply they will drink thinking it's very good ayurveda says rude sharan nidaghabhyam bed swal swastho bhi chalpasha except in summer and autumn or in hot climates you must drink little by little water should never be drunk in large quantities it should be drunk little by little continuously throughout the day and when you have thirst or when you are sweating much when the body needs because trishna is a vega you shouldn't suppress thirst so going by your thirst drinking enough water according to thirst according to the weather whether you are sweating and looking at the color of your urine the color of the urine should be yes nectar is also toxic amritam can also be toxic aushadham hi anabhijnadam nama roopa gunai stravi vijnadam chaabi duryuktam anarthayo bhavadyate so tikshna visham can be amrita and amritam can also be visham if it is misused So that I have the clear. In this chapter, we will study about that. I will show you that verse now itself. Yoga da bhi visham tikshnam uttamam bhesajam bhavet bhesajam cha bhi duryuktam tikshnam sampadde de visham. so even a good medicine even amrita mahesh you said yes body in ayurveda our medicines work after digestion only most of the modern medicines if you give a visham it will start working we vevai deham akhilam vyapya pakaya kalpate after it spreads and acts then it will the body will start metabolize by the time all its actions are done But our medicines are given to Agni. Agni will digest it. Once Agni digests it, it goes through the food distribution system. So it will reach only the actual locations where it is supposed to reach. And then another thing that is important for targeting of medicines is we have to follow the timing of the medicine correctly. We have to follow lifestyle and diet correctly. everything is important then only our medicine will work exactly the way it should work. so this is a very big uh, you know subject so is this point clear that in ayurveda we have to balance the doshas in such a way that when you treat one dosha the other doshas get in doesn't get disturbed and you must target the dosha at the point of the crime not in other places so you cannot see when somebody is held hostage our goal is to just kill the kidnapper without harming the hostages that is the skill so if you study ayurveda really it is like the work of a detective it's like west work of the anti terrorist groups how they function in a similar way we are managing the disease
So like Superman, Spider-Man, we can think Ayurveda people are like that really when they achieve it. They are the Supermans and Spider-Mans. Once they really get into action, but today nobody knows Ayurveda, <laughs> including me. We are only scratching at the surface. If we understand all these concepts and start implementing it, then it will be an amazing outcome. For that, a much deeper study of the Shastra is needed. So, Vipari the Gunair, Desha Matra Kalopa Padi Deir, Desha Jair Vinivartande, Vikara Sadhya Sammataha. So, in this way, when we look at the Gunas of the Doshas, Vipari the Gunaihi, and not simply Vipari the Gunaihi, Desha Matra Kalopa Padi De. According to the Desha, we have to plan the prescription. Kerala Ayurveda is different. Today we are trying to globalize Kerala Ayurveda, which is the most stupid thing. Kerala Ayurveda is, as the name says, it's for Kerala people only. In America, they are saying, if you want Kerala Ayurveda, you come. America needs American Ayurveda. Arizona needs Arizona Ayurveda. But in some places where the weather is similar to Kerala, maybe you can use this. But today, this is a very stupid thing that is being done. So in North Indian cold weather, they are going to give Kerala Ayurveda, which was designed for the tropical weather of Kerala, where we have hot, hottest, hot, hotter, hottest weather. There is no winter. In Delhi, when it is freezing, you go and do Kerala Ayurveda, what is the use? So Desha, Matra, the correct dosing is important. Kalopapadidei. According to the time, the season. If you do in such a way, by undoing the Guna Vigalpa, by locating the disease in the exact dhadu, in the exact organ, Veshajer Vinivartande, then also Ayurveda is not giving you false promises. Vikara Sadhya Samata. The Sadhya Samata Vyadis will be pacified. And then there is a disclaimer. It's a very, very important thing which shows Ayurveda was very realistic. Sadhanam natva sadhyanam vyadhinam upadishyate. See, this, all this wonderful theory, Superman, Spiderman, will not always work. Asadhyanam vyadhinam na sadhanam upadishyate. There are diseases. In spite of all these big discoveries we have made here. So, Charaga says, Yascha Roga samuthanam na shakyam eva eha kenajit parihartum na tat prapya shoji damyam manishina. See, don't create a disease which cannot be cured by anybody on this earth and then cry about it. Catch the disease in the early stage. So, prevention is better than cure. An ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure, as they say. That is what Ayurveda is also telling us. Don't think science and technology will keep developing and then we can have our way, do all the wrong things and then expect medicine to cure everything that we... No, Ayurveda is believing about health intelligence. It's given that warning long back. So don't like come to Charaka. Today, that is what people are doing also. If I... When we are sitting in the clinic, we are finding people coming to us at the last stage. And I'm reminded of Charagas and asking, can Ayurveda help? So I said, what all you have done? We have done everything. We have done that chemotherapy, we have done this, we have removed our limb. Everything has happened. The disease is in the last stages. And then I have to just remember Charagas' words, sadhanam natva sadhyanam. Ramuda sorrow before it arrives. That is a thing of Ayurveda. But still, you know. Ayurveda is confessing the limitations of medical science that everything under the
the sun every disease cannot be cured there is a stage up to which treatments work beyond that it doesn't work so it's a very realistic open there's no tall claims here and then ayurveda is telling that please make sure that if you act early and you do the treatment at the right time we can bring back the body to harmony and lead a full life and achieve the higher goals higher spiritual goals so when you are treating in another place we will read that very soon similar viparida gunair desha matra kalopapadi daihi bheshajer vinivartande vikara sadhya sammata similar sloka is there i will also show that which is relevant here yoga masam tu yo vidyat desha kalopapadidam purusham purusham vichya satnyayo bhijaguttama i'm jumping to that sloka this is called anagada vekshana tantra yukti because it's very important so who is the real physician yoga masam tu yo vidyad who knows how to combine all these herbs desha kalopa padidam according to desha and kala so where you are living where you are practicing where the patient is living according to that you have to combine the herbs purusham purusham vichya individualizing according to each individual purusham purusham vichya satnyayo bhishaguttama he is known as the great physician so it's a big journey that we have to make in rediscovering ayurveda today and i think with that we will conclude our session today namaste sir sir what is kerala ayurveda ah kerala ayurveda is what people are calling you know especially in kerala we have the kriya kalpas you know therapies many many new therapies have been created like talapodichil then many urichil treatments massages and so this is being marketed today in the name of tourism under the name kerala ayurveda actually clinicians here devised many trip another aspect of kerala ayurveda is many locally used herbs have been added into the pharmacopoeia here like you know hibiscus then there is this uh, ixora coccinea called paranthi these are all herbs that were available these are garden plants also they are flowers shoe flower paranthi is used in puja and it's a very beautiful decorative flower so many many such herbs got added in in ayurveda so kerala got its distinct set of practices so one is the kriya kalpas the other is the herbs that are used and then so many new formulations you must have heard of so many kashayams like amrutotaram kashayam is from the kerala tradition hindu gandham kashayam is from the kerala tradition so many such medicines have come from murivanna it's very famous now people so many of them can be used everywhere but there is nothing special about kerala ayurveda like that there was gujarat ayurveda also bengal was one of the strongest Uh, you know places where ayurveda was practiced so what we have to understand is instead of blindly promoting some aspect of ayurveda we must understand the principle sir uh, one question sir please yes. hello yes so uh, a person an indian not indian stay here if he moves to uh, us yeah. there he fast say there ayurveda like same principles right yes yes so see uh, see if we are what we are going to look at is desha and kala are different so if he is a person who is have see if he is just shifted to us his satmyam is still in india his desha satyam is still for india after some years he will get naturalized into the us he becomes us desha satyam 
So these are all concepts that we will come and study later. So if I am uh, just a short visitor of another country, my treatment, my lifestyle, everything still should be blessed on which place I really belong to. Today, this is creating more problems because people are shifting and moving much faster than they used to in ancient times. In olden sir, days, yeah. Sir, yes. Sir, I like to say uh, that I like to think it that we know drobas with gunas. Every uh, drobas associating with gunas. Only gunas is not possible. That is, I like to say, energy is the subject which is not possible without any medium or yeah. without any um, physical element. So I like to conclude that all and every gunas are the one type of level of energies. Yeah, you can understand it in... Uh, whatever way makes sense to you. Uh, but we only have to be a bit careful about using modern concepts of matter energy in our model. Okay. So, so at, at the same time, I like to say that energies, any type of energies at any stage, it act it overcomes some problems with its activation energies, which is applicable in the case of chemical reaction. Yes. When, I, when I use some medicine, but I like to say in the case of um, our uh, Ayurveda, it is not medicine. It the end to remove our doses. It is element. And the element which we need, it acts and the others will be excreted. After that, why I can think the side effect of this from Ayurveda? So I'm, I'm, I couldn't fully understand what you said. See, uh... If you don't look at all the factors and give a medicine, any there is no medicine which can magically work on your body without creating side effects. Any medicine will cause a side effect because any individual drug, if you don't combine it in the right way, that's what I was trying to explain. Ashwagandha, if you take alone, five people take it, three of them may get a side effect. There is no doubt about it. Brahmi, simply if I take only Brahmi, Egadravya Prayogas are not encouraged in Ayurveda. We have to create a yoga that is suitable for each individual so that in that person, it will make sure that everything remains in balance. That same yoga, if somebody else uses, this is some bad thing that is happening today. Somebody will take an Ayurvedic treatment, then he will share it with another person and they will also try to use it. Not knowing that Purusham Purusham Vichya is very important. We have to be individualized. So what works for one person may not work for another person. Because yes, sir. So yes, sir. Sir, hello. Yes. Sir, I'm thinking another thing that is the reaction pathway of our Drobas or Gunas or of our Ayurvedic medicines that is opposite in directions. What is uh, actually expressed in our body that is dominated by another gunas. It is the process of highly energetic process or every time modern science says this is the stable matter only and one way the energies will be minimized. If our energy will be in the ground state, then um, we will be in a rest phase or sneak uh, gunas. But when we use the opposite directions, how is it possible to uh, receive the 
snigthas gunas i don't know i'm not able to fully understand what you are getting at uh, i don't know I, i couldn't clearly understand what you are saying you know chemistry chemical reaction or pathways of the reaction yeah. how any type of chemical reaction goes on that is in the same direction or in opposite direction and they they overcome the energy level that is activation energies if we can overcome the activation energies then we will reach the another way another path ba what uh, that is uh, my uh, loksha or target yes i mean we can we can compare those things but we have to understand that i gave an example of some chemical reactions only for you know an ease of understanding gunas and uh, dravya are not exactly matching with modern concept of chemistry or physics it is coming from another epistemology it's another way of understanding the universe So if we try to make one to one correlations then we may not find clear answers so we want to reduce many people talked about vata as acetyl choline pitta as enzymes it's not like that so there are two different paradigms you cannot explain everything in ayurveda using modern scientific theories but some overall correlations we can make sometimes i am using some concepts from modern science because we are more familiar with that but everything we cannot explain so if, uh, what is dravya is not exactly matter in modern medicine stoola dravya is matter but sukshma dravya is already energy <laughs> you know atman is dravya for us in modern medicine science they may call that as some form of energy agni is in ayurveda is a dravya but in modern science heat is a form of energy so how can we correlate very clearly matter energy distinction is not exactly same as dravya guna as matter energy as you were trying to say is not not matching with our sir uh, another question is we say um, atma nirvikar so how is it possible that nirvikar atta is associating with shuk dukho and another things yes that is because of its association i try to explain this are very deep spiritual ex- experiences i discussed in the previous class the upanishadic statement dwa sakha dwa suparna sayuja sakha sakhayo see it is when we identify with the body that moment sugha dukha happens if we are not identifying with our body and mind then the atman is nirvikara but we identify we think it's like when i see a movie why are we crying i get involved in the movie and i identify with one of the characters i feel that i just was undergoing that pain and then i start crying after the movie is over i realize oh nothing has happened when you are in the dream state i have experienced certain dreams recently where i looked so real but when i wake up suddenly it is a dream so because i am identifying with that uh, experience and thinking it is happening to me that is why vedanta says this is like a dream so the dreaming atman is the jivatma the awake atman is the paramatma is is paramatma is nirvikara if you wake up then you are nirvikara so utishtada jagrada prapya varan nibodhata we will stop for today there was just one more question do jains have their own ayurveda jainism influenced ayurveda a lot there is a book called kalyana karaka by ugraditya acharya main influence jainism has done to ayurveda is to make it vegetarian so in in kalyana karaka of ugraditya acharya there is a prohibition of using non vegetarian food otherwise the principles are all the same but sir um, the lack of protein 
creates very types of diseases. Yes. How is it possible that we non veg? <laughs> the Ayurveda is uh, allowing everything. See, today also we have vegans. Is it not? Today, overuse of meat has come. So, the veganism, Jainism, all these things are measures that in society that it's a social process of reformation to prevent too much of eating of meat. Jainism came to prevent today. Veganism is coming world over. Veganism has become fashionable worldwide. Vegetarianism is on the rise because people are eating too much meat. So eventually these forces will balance out each other. And ideally speaking, we should be open. We should be flexi vegetarian. That's what Ayurveda tells. Try to be as vegetarian as possible. Try not to eat unnecessarily. That's the first thing. And if you have, when you really have to eat, try to be as, uh, you know, gentle and humane as possible in the way you choose your diets. Okay, the remaining uh, questions you can to our, ask. Uh, well, one uh, matter. According to our Shastras, we obey our tithis. That is today is Panchamang Tithau, Panchami Tithi. And yes. on this very day, we accept only uh, veg, fruits, etc. So those things are to control, slowly to control. Uh, sudden, uh, this thing is not. So in all religions, it is there. One day of fasting, one day of not eating meat. When you go to Kashi, we will give up. So these are all ways to control our mind in a systematic way. So any further questions you can put in the WhatsApp group. It's uh, it's a bit late now. I have to also move on to other things. So I hope I answered the questions that you asked. Thank you, sir. Namaste. Namaste, sir. Thank you. Oh. Dharmasya Sarva Dharma Swarupine Avatar Varithaya Rama Krishna Yate Namaha Rama Krishna Yate Namaha